This video is a supplement to the probability distributions chapter, so we're going to use an example using a blackjack game to help you understand probability distributions a little bit better. Just in case you're not familiar with the concept of playing blackjack, let's just go ahead and explain briefly how it works. Both you and the dealer will start with two cards. The object of the game is to get 21. Uh, in the absence of getting 21, the highest score, uh, less than 22, wins the game. You get over 21 and you lose. It's called going bust. Uh, if you have less than 21, you may take more cards. That's called hitting. Or you may stop, and that's called standing. All right, let's try an example here. So the dealer is dealing the cards and uh, starts with the seven. You get a five. Uh, the dealer gets a jack, so the dealer has 17 and you have 15. So now you're going to have to make some very difficult decisions, but you'll do that very intelligently based on probabilities. Blackjack dealers have a rule. Uh, they're going to hit on 16, get an additional card, or they're going to stand on 17. So in this case, the dealer is going to stand. So you have to make a decision. What should you do? Well, you have only 15, and so right now the dealer is going to win. So you have to go ahead and take another card. But what are the probabilities of you not going bust? Like it or not, you had to go ahead and take another card. So unfortunately, it's a 10. You lost. You went bust. Well, this is a good time to take a look at probability distributions. Remember, a probability distribution lists every possible outcome that you can get. So here is a table with a probability distribution of a full deck of cards. So we can get values from 2 to 11, the ace being 11 in this case, the way it counts for blackjack. We have four possible ways to get a 2 because there are four suits. And then we've kind of lumped all the 10 and face cards together and there are 16 possible ways to get a 10 or a face card which counts as 10. So then we take the probabilities, we add all the totals together, we get a total of 52 different outcomes. We divide the number of possible ways we could get that outcome by the total number of outcomes and we end up with basically 7.69% for every specific outcome and we've lumped all the 10 values together and we have then 30.77% uh, of getting a 10. We add them together, we know that we have 100%. So we're going to look at a probability distribution for the card game that we're working with because it's slightly different than this because we've already used some of the cards. So here I have revived the probability distribution based on the current possibilities that we have now. We've already used some cards. So for instance, there's a five showing, so there's only three additional fives. We've used some other cards as well. So this time, instead of having 52 possibilities, because four cards have been used, we have only 48 outcomes. But now we have the current odds of drawing each one of those particular values. So the odds of drawing a 2 right now are 8.33%. Well, this is somewhat useful, but it really would be more useful to use a cumulative probability distribution. And I'll show you that in the next slide to remind with a score of 15 that we had before we drew that last card, it was a 10. I'm looking for anything from a 6 or lower. And so adding a cumulative column here, remember the cumulative probability just adds the probability above it. We can see that there is about a 40% chance of getting a 6, 5, 4, 3, or 2. So really this is telling me there's a 60% chance of getting something higher than a 6 and going bust. Another very practical computation that we can create based on a probability distribution is the expected value or the mean. So to compute the expected value or the mean of a probability distribution, you simply take up the sum of all the probabilities times the value. So I've added an additional column here, which is x, and x is the value, so in this case 2, times the probability of getting a 2 is 8.33. We multiply the two together, and we do that for each and every of the outcomes that are remaining. Remember, we, we only have 48 outcomes remaining, um, and we sum the most, those up, sum up the probabilities, x times the probability of x summed. We then end up with a mean or an expected value of 6.33, which is higher than a 6, which is what I needed. If you're going to play blackjack in Atlantic City or Vegas, you're more than likely going to have more than just you and the dealer playing at that table. So now we've added an additional player, and we're going to see what the additional complexities of having this additional player is going to create for us in computing the expected value or deciding whether we should hit or stand. 
Okay, the dealer has 17, he's going to stand, but we know that that's the number that we have to beat. So the other player had 16, drew another card, happened to be a nine, that's 25, that other player went bust. So now we have an ace, that's 11, and a five, which gives us a score of 16. Once again, we have to hit, but let's go ahead and compute the probabilities of us getting something that will beat that dealer. So to compute the mean or the expected value from a probability distribution here, I have all the remaining cards. Uh, we have the outcome and the possible ways to get those outcomes. And notice that we have a reduced number of possible ways to get a five, a six, a seven, a nine, a face card, or an ace. And so instead of having 52 possible outcomes, we now have only 45. We take the current odds by taking the number of possible outcomes dividing by the uh, total number of outcomes, we end up then with a probability of each of those outcomes to compute the mean. We sum up x, which is the value, times the probability of each of those values. We sum them up, and we can see that the expected value is 6.422. I was hoping to get a 6 or less, but the mean, or my expected value, is going to be higher than a 6. Well, we saw that the expected value is going to be higher than the six or less that I need. Um, but what's the probability that I will not go over 21? Well, once again, the cumulative probability of getting a six or less is 40%. So that means I have a 60% chance of going bust with the next card. Well, let's see how you do. You go ahead and take another card. It's a five. You win. You got 21. You beat the odds. Well, of course, that's not always going to happen when you're gambling, so be very careful. But if you ever do play blackjack, all you need is Excel, and you can build a probability distribution. And as long as they let you wait while you're making your decision whether you're going to hit or stand, you can probably do much better. And remember, all of these lessons are based on my textbook, Surviving Statistics, which is available on Amazon. And do remember to check out my website for downloadable files, calculators, and other resources.